Okay, so I'm very excited to have brought together this focus group of Arab Americans in Michigan ahead of a very important election this Tuesday, November 5th. So I guess I want to ask you a few show of hand questions. So show of hands, who here voted for Biden in 2020? Unfortunately. <laughs> how many people here voted for Trump in 2020? Um, and how many people here are voting for a different party on Tuesday than they voted for last time around? First time voting, so I can't really- Yeah, <laughs> not fair to you. And I forgot to ask, how many people here voted for third party? Okay. Oh, oh no. I mean, last, last time, last time, 2020, oh, yes, 20. in 2020. Um, so how many people here are making their decisions based on the genocide in Gaza and the further escalations in the Middle East, Lebanon, Yemen? Okay, quite a few of you. Who here in 2020 or 2024 will be voting for Trump? Who here in 2024 plans to vote for Kamala Harris? <laughs> we have one. I and, don't know if it's Trump. Honestly, it's... Oh, you're undecided. Yes, I, I, I'm i still battling between my, conscience. my conscious, my heart, the reality. Like, mm. Okay. Trying. And we can mm -hmm. go back to that. The how many people here? Line them all up for you. <laughs> how many people here plan to vote third party, 2024? Okay. And I guess how many people here are still undecided for 2024? Okay. Um, all right. Just to clarify, I'm not undecided, but I didn't vote in the last election, and I don't plan to vote in this one. Okay. So yeah, I forgot to actually yeah. even. So how many people here are not voting? Okay. So for those who are voting third party, I'm gonna play. I'm just gonna ask you this because a lot of people are saying it. What do you say to people who argue that you are wasting your vote and helping to get Trump elected? Who would like to take that first? <laughs> well, if Trump does get elected, that's not our problem. That's solely the Democrats' problem. Um, I can't, in good conscience, vote for either party, um, Democrat or Republican. So like when they say, oh, but you know, a vote third party is a vote for Trump. Well, first off, I'm not gonna I'm not going to vote for somebody who has a direct hand in genocide. And then secondly, I'm not voting for Trump either. <laughs> so that's your problem, not mine. OK, does anybody want to add to that, yeah. please? I think it's kind of presumptuous to assume that the Democratic Party had our votes in the first place. Uh, so I actually uh, I resent that assumption um, in 2020, not 2020, I'm sorry, back in 2000, I remember uh, both parties kind of scaring uh, our community into going one way or another, right? I was not old enough to vote. Then in 2004, they scared me into voting for John Kerry. I said never again at that point. I'm not gonna be backed into this anymore, into this corner. The lesser of two evil is actually the evil of two lessers, and I'm not gonna engage in that. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So I think to the point of um, a vote for a third party candidate, although I'm not voting for a third party candidate, the idea that a vote for a third party candidate is actually a vote for Trump, I would actually respond and just reframe the discussion and say that a vote for either of the two candidates is actually nothing but a vote for mm. the corporatocracy that is actually running the entire government. You know, we've been scared with one party, scared with the other. I think also this is something that is, this is really nothing new. This is something that, like Malcolm X used to speak about it, you know, more than 60 years ago. And the fact that what he said is so perfectly relevant just shows you how nothing really changes in the system. They use one party to make you feel that it's so scary, you have to vote for the other party. And then they just switch their policies back and forth to keep you in that trap. I just lastly want to contribute being, um I likely will vote third party um, or potentially write in. Um, and I'd say that a response to that, that question is, I don't want to be asked strategically how I should vote. I'd like to be asked morally how I should vote. I want to do what's right on the ballot. And I want my conscience to feel that I've done something right. And the question that we keep on being asked Guys, focus on strategy. You don't tell someone that's more, you know, has a morally injured soul after a genocide for one year, what's more strategic for your community, right? So I need to stand by the Palestinians. I need to stand by the Lebanese. Um, I have to understand the system is broken, right? And no amount of strategy will fix that, right? And it's let alone my one vote, so. Please, yes, uh, behind you, Nasser. Um, first of all, uh, we have a very corrupt political system. Both parties are corrupt, and they have a symbiotic relationship with each other. They feed the corruption feeds off each other. 
um, when I look at this election, it's basically we need to punish the Biden administration. Simple as that. I don't care who you vote for, but we need to show Biden and the Democratic leadership that you cannot commit a genocide and come back to us with, for support. We need to put a nail in the heart of this administration. And Kamala Harris is just an extension of the administration because she hasn't said she's going to do anything different. So if Trump gets elected or, you know, and they lose, that's a great thing. Because in the end, we're standing up against genocide. There's nothing else that matters. Not the economy, not health care, not education, not roads, not taxes, but the people dying in the Middle East. The wantless killing that's happening. I think I... I Personally, agree with you, but not totally. I mean, I do fear. I don't want a Trump presidency. I was definitely against the first one. I saw the harm that he did to many different communities. We have a lot of allies, and we work in allyship with a lot of different communities here that a Trump presidency is going to harm. So I wouldn't say, like, nothing else matters. But yes, it's true. When we see our people being genocided, that takes top priority. We want to stop the slaughter. What I would say to those who are saying a vote for a third party is a vote for Trump is for them, these people, to look inward because we have been telling them for over a year that you can't get our votes this way, that the Democratic Party needs to focus on why we are turning away from them and not just blaming us or trying to fear monger us into, into voting for them. Uh, just like my colleagues here said, and we don't, they shouldn't presume to have our vote. And now we're seeing, for example, these attack ads against Jill Stein and against third parties, uh, as if they, uh, you know, they're collaborating with Trump. That's not true. Actually, most people who I know who are voting third party, if third party wasn't an option, they wouldn't vote for Harris. They would vote for Trump or not vote top of the ticket. And so the Democratic Party needs to focus on why they're not getting our vote. And it's way past time that they do that. <laughs> well, I actually, um, I, I want you to say more, but I want to real quick, because I know you want to talk, Ali. So I want to ask so the two people who are voting for Trump. We have Ali and Sammy. Um, so I want you to explain why are you voting for Trump? Um, and if it's related to what's happening in the Middle East, how do you think him winning will be better? Sorry. First off, um, whether my opinion uh, is towards Trump or Kamala, I look at all of you guys like brothers and sisters. Uh, my political view should not affect the way you look at me, and your political view should not affect your way, uh, of my way of looking at you. My family has always, my grandfather has always been Democrat. You know, he's always been, as all us Arabs, we've, they've always, we've, we're always the backbone for them, you know, and I really don't think they ever appreciated us. And that's the only reason I'm going for a republic, and that's why I'm voting for President Donald Trump. I understand some of you guys have a different point of view, and I respect it, and I still look at you the same way like I always do. But from my point of view, I have family at Yemen as well, and I have my brothers and sisters in Palestine and Lebanon getting killed every single day. When you see Trump coming to Dearborn, and when you see him, I feel like he's really focusing on us Arab more than 2016. Back then I was way young, I was young. I have no clue what was going on. I just wanted to go play Fortnite or do whatever I want to do. But, but now I'm really getting into the family business. I'm really holding into my college. I'm, I'm, I have a, I'm trying to pursue my life. And I really do see um, President Trump, uh, you know, being the best, best choice for us. Kamala and Biden, we, we, as I like to say, we're in a very, very unique election. We get to see both administrations that already ran. Technically, Kamala already ran. Uh, Biden, Biden is not even not our president. I really don't look at him as my president. And I know some people here agree that he's not our president. But Kamala has a stance too. She had a stance in the border control. She had a stance on Palestine. She said she, there will be a ceasefire. I, I never seen one. CNN always comes out every other week. Oh, Kamala is asking for a ceasefire, but never t happened. They keep keeping. They keep making us get in those promises and making us promises and be like, hey, we're going to take care of you guys, but never end up doing nothing. I'm tired of it. I really am. And that's why I'm voting for President Donald Trump. We really think he's going to give us peace. He's giving us so much promises. And if he doesn't do it, letting you know, we will hold him accountable. 
Okay, so I want to ask, I know Sammy's also voting for Trump, and I know a lot of people want to respond to that and maybe have some other things to say, but I want to ask, oh. Sammy, I think you agree with what a lot of what Ali said. So with regard to Trump, I do want to challenge you on the, you know, when we talk about Trump saying, bringing peace to the Middle East, I mean, this is somebody who, Jared Kushner is his son-in-law, Jared Kushner wants to, you know, have luxury condos in Gaza after they're done destroying it. Uh, he's somebody who moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He's somebody who has said he wants Netanyahu to finish the job. He is somebody who has promised that if Miriam Adelson, Sheldon Adelson's wife, gives him $100 million, he will uh, let Israel annex the West Bank. He is somebody that, during a campaign rally, said he thinks Israel is too small and he wants it to expand its borders. And I think a lot of people here probably would ask you, how is this person, and I don't know if actually this is the main reason that you're supporting him, because there might be other reasons you're supporting Trump, but if it is because of Middle East, how is this person supposed to be better on the Middle East to the point where you are giving him your support? We try to reach out, honestly, to the Democrats. We try, even we traveled too many times, honestly, to Washington, D.C. We met with the 66 of Congress and senators in Washington, D.C. We try to get some help and support or anything, honestly, to fix the situations in Yemen. And nothing has happened. Just they listen to us and they told us, okay, you know, we take care of it and we reach out to you guys. And the last time, honestly, like a month, uh, like uh, four months ago, we gathered almost 100 people from all over the nation. We went to Washington, D.C. We met with a lot of senators. And the same thing, there is nothing has happened. They didn't care. Uh, in this campaign, honestly, we try even to reach us, uh, us Atorfi and others. We try to talk to them about the situation in Yemen, what's going on with the Democratic, what's, what happened to them. Nothing. If they ignore us. I, let's, be, let's face it. This time, they ignore the Middle East, or they ignore all Arab and Muslims, actually, in this nation, in this community. They never reach out to anyone. So we reach out, honestly, to the uh, Republicans. Because we tried to get help, whatever has came up, we need to get help. The situations in the Middle East, especially in Yemen, in uh, Palestine, and now in Lebanon, we need to get help. We need the president, honestly, he, he's going to listen to us. We need to get some some promises. It's a campaign promise, they call it. We met with him many times. And I met with the President Trump, honestly, uh, two times. And I met with his uh, vice president one time. And I with his uh, brother-in-law and also others, uh, the government, honestly, they're working with him. We get to the point, we're not going to vote for you unless we get the promises. Okay, so for you, it's a matter of you're not getting a response from the Democrats and the Republicans are giving they you a response. They ignore us, yes, that's what it is. 